Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. Today, I will be reading from the r slash entitled people subreddit. So let's jump into it. Karen supervisor denies me medical care. Gets written up herself. Back when I was studying for my ECE, early childhood educator, aka preschool teacher, I was assigned to an inner city daycare for my internship. The daycare was located in an office tower and catered mostly to the people that worked in the buildings nearby. I was posted to the preschool room, 24 to 5 year olds and 3 teachers. I was excited and eager to learn everything I could and really wanted to do a good job. Good job equals happy kiddos. Happy kiddos equals good grades. Easy peasy, right? Two of the teachers were fantastic. Let's call them Polly and Molly. They welcomed me, showed me around, and introduced me to the rest of the center staff. Every day, I learned more from them, and I felt like I was growing as a teacher. The third, ahem, lady <laughs> was not nice. Okay, she was openly hostile. Maybe she ran out of Malix, or she just needed to get her some, but woman was a hardcore bitch. Let's call her Bertha. Bertha was older than the rest of us by at least 20 years and made it her life's mission to cut me down every chance she got. Paints not put away to her specifications, she would remind me loudly in front of parents that I had to do it again and properly this time. Dollhouse is not lined up in perfect symmetry. I would be given a lecture by a very gleeful Bertha on the need to keep the classroom tidy. No matter what I did, Bertha found a way to crap all over it. Talks to the center director got me no satisfaction. It got to the point Molly and Polly were trying to intervene on my behalf with no success. I figured I was only going to be there for three months, so I would just suck it up finish my term, and hoped it would go by quickly. It all came crashing down, quite literally, one sunny morning. We had taken the kids on an extended walk across the city to a puppet show, and were on our way back to the center with our double line of happy little ducks when I stepped off a curb to cross the road and took a nosedive into the street. Our line of ducklings stopped, Molly and Polly helped me up, and we assessed my assorted injuries. Face scraped, Yep, knees bruised, yep, but most alarming was the six inch slice of a quarter inch deep road rash on my hand that was causing blood to pour down my arm and drip off my elbow. Oh, OP, you need to go to the ER. Stop bleeding, you're traumatizing the children. I need to go to the ER. No, you need to go back to the center with us and finish out your day. Bertha, she's bleeding. I am head teacher. Finish the day or I will write you up and you will get a failing grade on your internship. Molly or Polly, I forget which one, dug through our supply backpack and managed to find me a face cloth to put over my hand. When we got back to the center, I cleaned my arm up and wrapped my hand in a dish towel. The pain was unholy. I actually wondered if I had broken my wrist. I thought of going to the director, but her office was dark and locked, leaving Bertha in charge of the center and me. So I managed to finish out the day by changing the dish towel about halfway through. The thought of being written up loomed large in my mind. I didn't want to fail my internship and maybe be removed from the course. So I sucked it up and chugged along enduring scoffs and eye rolls from Bertha and comforted by supportive hugs and sympathy from Molly and Polly when Bertha wasn't looking. I made it home, walked through the front door and burst into tears. My family looked at my bloody towel and wanted to know what happened. I showed them my hand and one of my many brothers shoved me into his car and took me to the ER. The next few hours were filled with a whole bunch of pain while the doctors painstakingly picked out every tiny bit of gravel they could see out of my hand and then scrubbed it with a bristle brush to make sure it was clean. To add insult to injury, I was given two shots in the bum, antibiotics and tetanus. Then my hand was wrapped in a soft cast and I was given a note for light duty for two weeks. The next day, I was back at work taking my coat off when Bertha walked into the staff room and saw my cast. <sighs> Going for the dramatic look, are we? 
No, the ER doc put this on my arm last night after spending two hours picking gravel and mud out of my hand. I walked past her and straight to the director's office and told her everything that happened. She was pissed at Bertha, who was the one who got written up. My professor was contacted and I was moved immediately to a different center across the city. Later, I heard that Bertha left the daycare. Whether it was on her own steam or she was kicked to the curb, I don't know. I was just happy to hear she was gone. I love how Bertha tells her to stop bleeding, as if that's an option. I never understood why wretched people like this become teachers. I don't understand how people can get off treating others this way. I was actually a preschool teacher as well, in my early 20s. I think I was actually only 20, and the woman there treated me like trash. I don't know if it was jealousy because I was young, but it was one of the most toxic work environments I have ever endured. And I thought it was absolutely insane that these kinds of people were teaching children. Needless to say, I only worked there for a month. Valley girl lady wanted to call the cops on us for waiting in my truck. Not sure if this is the right subreddit for this, but here it goes. My roommate and I had to head to Vancouver to buy a front passenger side fender panel off of a truck to replace the badly dented one on mine. We assumed the traffic would be really bad, so we left a bit earlier. The plan was to meet the guy at 6 p.m. after he got off work, but we arrived about 40 minutes earlier than expected. So I sent him a message on OfferUp that said we'd sit and wait. So we parked in a nice open spot across the street in front of a house with a fence. No big deal. There were other people there and they didn't seem to mind us at all. We were waiting about 30 minutes, just sitting and watching YouTube videos. And during that time, a woman parked her car in front of another house a ways ahead of us, but we paid no attention to her. I was just sitting and watching Cyanide and Happiness on my phone when suddenly I notice a woman creeping up to my truck. I say creeping because she'd walk a few feet and just stare, then walk a few more feet doing the same thing. The lady finally walked right up to our passenger window and asked why we were there. And she spoke with a somewhat condescending valley girl-like accent and used the word like a lot. She looked about 35 plus from what I could tell. The following is more or less paraphrased, but should be pretty close to how the conversation actually was. Like, what are you doing here? Oh, uh, we're just waiting on somebody. Okay, because like, I was getting ready to call the cops on you. Because I thought you were like, stalking me or something. Because you were sitting here for so long. Roommate and I just give each other a look like we're saying, is this lady serious? So I laughed and said, oh, believe me, I get it. Gotta make sure and look out for yourself. Then I pointed across the street and said, you see that red truck over there? We're waiting for the guy that owns it to get home because I wanna buy parts off of it. He's selling the truck in pieces on offer up. Valley Girl gave an awkward pause and said, okay, because like, I don't know you and this is like a really close knit neighborhood. Plus your truck has Oregon plates on it. So I just wanted to make sure you weren't like scoping me out or anything. We have a neighborhood watch here. <laughs> Nope. We're just here to buy a fender panel off that truck. And that's pretty much it. Like, okay. She didn't say anything more after that and just walked away and soon drove off in her car. Then the guy we were meeting got home and we told him about Valley Girl. And when he heard her description, he said he wasn't even sure she actually lived in this neighborhood because he'd never seen her. We were very confused, but just got to work getting the fender off the truck and forgot about it. I just had to read this one because if you've been around for a while, you know I love doing a good old valley girl voice. Like, I love how she made the excuse that she was looking out for the neighborhood, yet her expressed fears were not about the neighborhood. They were just about her. 
Also, I get it, sister. People can be creepy, but if you suspect someone is stalking and or following you, why would you approach them? Also, OP and his roommate were there first. How would they be stalking her? Sounds like she was the one doing the stalking. Great googly moogly, but anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed those two entitled people stories. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do, and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye!